Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at ACT math problems that involve angles. So we're going to cover some basics first. We're going to look at straight angles, vertical angles, angles that are formed when a line crosses parallel lines, and also angles in triangles and polygons. And then I've got seven uh, sample ACT problems that all have to do with angle basics. This video is not going to get into um, trigonometry. Uh, I'm going to make another video on that to cover that. But this is going to take a look at all the basic angle problems. Let's take a look. Okay, so let's take a look at some angle basics. Uh, first of all, a straight angle or a line is going to be 180 degrees. So any two angles that form a straight line, like here A and B, are going to add up to 180 degrees. Or any three or more angles, as long as they add up to a straight line. You can see when you put A, B, and C together, uh, they add up to a straight line. So that's going to be 180 degrees when you add those three together. Vertical angles are formed when you have two intersecting lines. So the angles that are crossed from each other are what we consider vertical angles. So in here, A and C are going to be vertical angles, and D and B are going to be vertical angles. So vertical angles are going to be equal. So A is going to equal C, and B is going to equal D. Notice in a diagram like this, we also have straight angles as well. So we've got the straight angles of A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, A. Notice all those pairs uh, make straight lines and add up to 180 as well. And if we look at A, B, C, and D all together, it forms a circle. So when we've got four or any number of angles, um, in this case four, that form a circle, then we're going to have a 360 degrees in all of those angles when we add those together. All right, now angles when one line crosses two parallel lines. So if the two lines going across are parallel and we have a line that crosses it, um, we're going to get eight different angles. Now, if you notice, unless it forms, um, unless it crosses it perpendicularly, it's going to form four angles that are bigger than 90 degrees and four angles that are smaller than 90 degrees. And that's important to notice. So these four angles that I've labeled A, B, C, and D are all greater than 90 degrees. And those are all going to be equal to each other. Now, the names to those, A and B, are considered vertical angles that we just covered. Uh, B and C are considered alternate interiors. A and C are corresponding angles. And A and D are alternative, alternate exterior angles. Uh, but the, the, when you're solving for angles, it's just important to know that those four larger angles are going to be equal to each other. And similarly, we've got four angles that are smaller than 90 degrees. Uh, these that I've labeled here, E, F, G, and H, and those are going to be all equal to each other. And then any combination of a large and a small angle in this is going to get us 180. So if I take any of the red ones, A, B, C, or D, and add it to any of the small angles, E, F, G, or H, I'm going to get 180 degrees. All right, the next thing we're going to look at is triangles and polygons. So a triangle, the three angles of a triangle, no matter what triangle looks like, whether it's a right angle or not, are going to add up to 180 degrees. Now let's take a look at, at a quadrilateral. So we can take and divide that into two triangles. So the total angle of those four angles combined is going to be the same as those two triangles. So it's going to be 180 plus 180, or 360. So therefore, the four angles added together is going to get us 360 degrees. What about a pentagon? Well, a pentagon can be divided into three triangles. So the total angles here is going to be 180 times 3, or 540. So those five angles, when we add them together, are going to be 540. And just to put it as a general equation, we take the number of sides minus 2. That's actually the number of triangles that you're going to be able to form is the number of sides minus 2. And then we multiply that times 180. So you can see in both of those cases, we could have used that equation, n minus 2 times 180, to get those same answers as well. 
Okay, let's take a look at these seven sample ACT math problems that have to do with angles. All right, in the first one, we've got BAC is 30. So that's here. ABC is 110. 110. And we're trying to find ACD. So this is the unknown right here. So we could do that by finding this angle first. So we know that these three have to add up to 180. So 110 and 30 gets us 140. So this angle here has to be 180 minus 140 or 40. And then the 40 and the X form a straight angle. So that's going to be 180 degrees. So the 180 minus the 40 gets us 140. Answer G. I've got a little shortcut here. The angle that I put in the square, in this case 40, the 40 plus these two angles has to be 180 degrees because it's triangle. The 40 plus X has to be 180 degrees because it's a straight angle. So therefore, the 30 and the 110 also have to be the same as X. So we could have skipped the step of finding the 40 and just added the 30 and the 110 and got right to 140. Either way, our answer is going to be 140 for this one. All right, in the next problem, we're looking for the sum of x, y, and z. All right, so we can find um, y by doing 180 minus 72 or 108. We can find x by doing 180 minus 57 because x and 57 form a straight angle or 123. And then z, um, we can find um, this if we wanted to or just like we did in the last one, we can just add the 57 and the 72 to get us 129 here. And then we add up the three angles. 108 plus 123 and 129. And we get 360. Answer J. Now, interestingly enough, we don't need to know what these two angles are. Um, it's always going to be 360 no matter what these angles are. Um, if we get y minus angle A, x minus angle B, and z minus angle C, right? That's going to be 180 minus A, 180 minus B, and 180 minus C, which is going to be 540 minus A, B, and C, which A, B, and C form a triangle, so it's going to be 540 minus 180, or 360 regardless of what A and B are. So just an interesting twist there. All right, in this angle, um, it tells us that C is the intersection of AD and BE. Um, what's the measure of BAC? So BAC, so we're trying to find this angle down here. Um, we can find BCA because it's a vertical angle. These two lines form a vertical angle, so that's going to be 45. 45 and, 30, and 35 gets us 80. These need to form uh, 180 degrees because it forms a triangle, so 180 minus 80, and that gets us 100. All right, and this fourth problem, this is a parallelogram. Um, so if you are familiar with um, properties of parallelograms, that's fine. I'm just going to treat it like two sets of parallel lines. Uh, so we have the 40 and 57 are given, and we have to find this. So if we look at this set of parallel lines, right? So if we look at this set of parallel lines, then this 
angle is going to be the same as this. And then if we look at this set of parallel lines, this crosses this angle. So this and this are going to be alternate interiors. So this is going to be 57. And then this unknown x plus the 57 plus the 40 form a straight line and have to be 180 degrees. So the 57 and the 40 gets us 97. The 180 minus 97 gets us 83. And our answer is D. So all I did is I said it's a parallelogram. So we have two sets of parallel lines. We have a line crossing parallel lines. So the 40 and this are alternate interiors. For these two parallel lines, these two angles end up being alternate interiors. And then we add up these three angles to get 180. All right, in this problem, it's asking us how many angles are going to be 50 degrees. So we have parallel lines, and we have two lines crossing it. So these two, this and the 130, they've got to add up to 180 because they form a straight line. Now, this line T crosses parallel lines. So we know that all of the small angles, when a line crosses a parallel lines, all these small angles that are formed are all going to be the same. So those are all going to be 50 as well. Now, when you look at U crossing the parallel lines, then you also have the same four angles. So this, this, this and this are all the same angle as well. But we don't know what it is yet, so let's take a look. These three angles here form a straight line. So 80, 50, and this angle also form a straight line. So 80 and 50 is 130. So 180 minus 30, that's also 50. So this is gonna be 50. And then all four of these are gonna be 50 because the line U is crossing two parallel lines. So this is going to be 50, this is going to be 50, and this is going to be 50. Uh, just to make sure there isn't anything else that is 50, this is going to be 130, this is going to be 130 because those form straight lines with the 50s, this is a vertical angle here, so it's going to be 130, this is a vertical angle, so this is going to be 80. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 angles that are 50. So our answer here is C. All right, so we have a pentagon here. Uh, tells us one of the angles, and it wants us to do, find the total measure of the other four angles. So let's take a look at what the total in a pentagon would be. We could take a pentagon and divide it into three triangles. We know the triangles are 180 each. So 180 times three triangles gets us 540. If you'd want to use the equation, n minus two times 180. n is the number of sides, so five minus two times 180, or that gets us the same three times 180, or 540. So all five angles are gonna be 540. We know one of them is 50, so 540 minus the 50 gets us 490 for the other four angles added together. The answer is K. All right, line A, B, C, and D are shown below. A and B are parallel, so these two lines are parallel. Which of the following is a set of all angles that must be supplementary to X? So here's X. And we know that when we have this line C crossing two parallel lines, we know that these four angles, the ones that are greater than 90, are all going to be the same. And we know that the others 
are going to be supplementary. They're going to add up to 180. So 1, 2, 9, and 10 are all going to be supplementary to x. So 1, 2, 9, and 10. Now, what about all these over here? Well, we know nothing about the relationship between C and D. So D could look like this. It could look like this. It could look like this. So they've given us no indication of the relationship between C and D. So we can't assume that any of these angles have a relationship to any of these angles. So therefore, 1, 2, 9, and 10 are the only angles that are going to be supplementary to X, which gives us the answer H. Thanks for watching. If you have an ACT test coming up, good luck with it. Um, if you're new here and you'd like to subscribe, you can do so right over here. I've got other suggestions of videos for you to watch right here. Uh, please comment below on things that you liked about the videos or ways that I can improve it. And thanks for watching and come back again soon.